If you program in ES6 for any length of time, you'll invariably run into applications that make use of what are called promises. I'll explain what promises are conceptually in this session, and then provide some examples in future sessions. By now, you should be somewhat familiar with the concept of asynchrony in JavaScript, but here's a brief recap. Though JavaScript is a single-threaded language, it can invoke functions asynchronously. It can do this in the form of events, function callbacks, or as we'll cover in this section, promises. A promise is a built-in object type that, according to Mozilla Developer Network, represents the eventual completion or failure of an asynchronous operation and its resulting value. A promise object can be in one of three states, pending, waiting to resolve or fail, fulfilled, when the operation resolves or is already resolved, and rejected, when the operation fails or has already failed. To create a promise object, use the new operator. The constructor argument is a function to execute that will determine the promise's resolution. This function has two arguments, which are the functions that either resolve the promise or reject it. At the moment the promise is created, it is considered to be in a pending state. If the resolve function is invoked inside this function, the promise is considered resolved. If the reject function is invoked inside of this function, or an error is thrown in the function body, then the promise is considered rejected. Here's how to assign a callback to this promise that is invoked when the promise resolves or is in a resolved state. Notice that this console message was invoked immediately. The promise was already resolved, so the callback was issued right away. To have a promise return a value, pass it in the resolve function in a promise definition, like this. A promise can only go from being in a pending state to being in a resolved or rejected state. It cannot go back to being in a pending state. This behavior makes promises ideal for events that need to only succeed or fail once, such as copying a file, processing a network request, and more. It's also ideal for handling events that have already happened. You might recall that in a previous session, the DOM content loaded event needed to be combined with a static check of the document's state. Promises, as long as they call resolve or reject, will never not issue a callback, no matter when the listeners are assigned. This is why they're called promises. Let's put the resolve call in the promises function inside a set timeout call to demonstrate the asynchronous nature of promises. And just to show that promises can only ever be resolved once by design, Notice that the function defined in then was only issued once, immediately. Promises have other capabilities as well. They can be chained together or called one after another in succession, where the result of the former promise feeds into the one after it. They can also be run in parallel, and either issue a callback once all promises are in a resolved state, or issue a callback once at least one of them is. This is immensely powerful when writing build scripts, where files can asynchronously be created, parsed, transformed, and copied in Node.js. In summary, the promise object is a tool for handling asynchronous methods that only need to execute once. They're named promises because they should always end up in a resolved or rejected state. And finally, promises can easily be combined to handle a number of complex asynchronous operations.